a lot of times or sometimes in history, it's only when you look back that you can understand the turning points. Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And June 2nd, uh, in the year 455, commemorates what we call now the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Uh, this is the day when the Vandals uh, started their sack of Rome. It lasted like two weeks. So depending on when this video gets published, we're still probably in that, in that you know, sack of Rome window. And the Vandals are called that, right? Not because um, they were so vandalous, but the other way around actually. We take the word Vandal, right, to mean someone who destroys because of what the Vandals did to Rome. Uh, that's, your, that's your historical tidbit for the day. So, uh, now, what, what's, what's so significant about that? Well, to be honest, at the time, probably not much, right? Um, the, Rome was sacked earlier in 410, uh, I think sometime in the 300s. Ooh, my Roman aficionados help me out here. Uh, but it was sacked multiple times before the 455 date that we now, looking back, mark as the end of the Western Roman Empire. So, what does that mean? What does that mean for you? Well, I think one of the things that that means is, imagine you were alive during 455, right? And Rome is getting sacked again, right? And what are you, what are you gonna do after? You know, I mean, the, the, the sacking lasts two weeks, so you're probably gonna try to hide and not die during that, right? But the day after, the day after the sacking is done, the vandals have left, they've carried off some treasure, whatever. You're, you're, you survived, you're still alive. What are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna pick up the pieces, you're gonna go to work if that's still an option, right? You're gonna fix your house, you're gonna clean up the debris, like your life goes on, right? There's always an after. And it's only now looking back that we say, hey, that was the end of the Roman Empire. But at the time, did you know that? Were you, were you aware? Were you like, oh my God, this is the end of everything? Probably not. Traumatic, horrible, less than fun experience? Yeah, sure, but was it the end of your life? Well, I mean, you could have died, but, but you know what I mean, right? Like, was it the end of your way of life? Uh, not entirely, right? Like, you still went to work the next day, probably, if, if you had a job and if that was available. Like, there are things that still continued on. If you were enslaved, you were still in slavery after, uh, and, and you still had to, you know, go do your slave chores or whatever. Like, life went on as normal, uh, after that, right? And I think that's an important lesson for us. I, I think that we live in a crumbling, decaying, falling apart empire, right? And part of that, I, I don't know that we will, uh, we're, we're living through a historical time in the sense that this is definitely the end and that's less than fun. Uh, however, um, it's, it's significant in the sense that there, there's not going to necessarily, I don't think, be this cataclysmic change, right? You went to sleep on, you know, Thursday night and you woke up on Friday morning and the world's completely different. Everything you knew is different. Like that, that, these things always happen gradually and slowly and less, less exciting in actual life than they are in the history books. So when we look back and we mark, when was the last day of the, of the American empire, right? Was it, was it when they started, uh, when they put Trump on trial and convicted him? Was it when they stole the election? Was it when they stole it a second time? That's still coming. Uh, was it, right, like when, when, when was the end of the American empire? That's for historians 100 years from now to figure out. What's for you to figure out right now isn't necessarily when is the end, but what am I gonna do tomorrow? Right? How am I going to pick up the pieces and move on? Uh, and, and this is where I can get frustrated sometimes with uh, the prophets of doom, as I call them. Right, The people who are, are like, it's all just ending and it's horrible and it's going to get much worse and you're just an ignorant idiot for not knowing it. And, you know, this, this kind of constant prophetic message of doom. And I, I, don't, I think some of them do it intentionally. I think some of them do it unintentionally. Right, I try not to do that uh, as much because... He who owns the ho hope, hope owns the future. He who owns the hope owns the future. And, and what I mean by that is, like, again, there is a tomorrow. There is an after. There is something you're going to have to do and you have to pick up the pieces and you have to move on. And if you have a vision for the hope and the, the future, then, then you own it. And what I mean by is if, is if you let them demoralize you and crush you and you live in this constant doom cycle of sorrow, depression, anger, and sadness, 
there's no future for you because that, that's all you'll become. But if you understand that these things, uh, these things happen from time to time and empires crumble, right? And things fall apart and you have a vision for the future, 50, 75, 100 years from now, and what you want that future to be, and you have a hope in achieving that, maybe not in your lifetime, well, then you, then you own the future, right? And so I, I want us to think about that. As we live in this time of decay and, and decadence and decline, right? And as we think about the future, I think understand that there probably likely won't be some cataclysmic event. Look, in the, in the, in my opinion, super unlikely scenario that there's an actual civil war thing that happens, which I don't, I don't really think that'll happen. But, but let's just say it breaks out in Nevada. I just pick Nevada because it's some random state. Okay. I guarantee you people in Kentucky are going to work the next day. They're like, wow, do you, do you, do you hear about what happened in Nevada? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's crazy, you know? And you're sitting at the water cooler, clacking in your little keys and work as normal. Life will just go on. It will always just go on, okay? So you need to understand that, again, the, the life is gonna go on. You need to have a vision for the future. Don't be demoralized by the doom and gloom. Don't let the prophets of doom fill you with their sorrow all the time. And have a vision and a hope for the future, knowing that, hey, it's probably going to continue to get worse and I don't really know where the bottom is and whatever, but there's hope beyond that. There's hope because Jesus is king, number one. And number two, there's hope because we can start to invest in and build for that future now, right? Italy in, I don't know, 1000 AD, right? is totally different than Italy in 455, right? There, are, there were people pining after the title of Roman emperor for like 2,000 years, well, okay, not 2,000, 1,000 plus years after the fall of the Roman Empire. The title Tsar for Russia, right? C-Z-A-R, Tsar, that, that's, a, that's a title of Caesar, right? So the, the last Russian Tsar dies in 1917, right? So for 1,500 years, people are still looking back to claim that title, right? Life is still going on. And it left such an impact, Rome left such an impact in European history, right? That everybody's always trying to, trying to get back to it and claim it and be like, no, I am the Roman Empire. You have the Holy Roman Empire later, which is neither Roman nor holy, nor an empire, really. Uh, never mind. Point being, you need to build for that future. You need to invest in what's, what's the tomorrow. There's not going to be some cataclysmic thing. It's slowly going to get worse. How are you uh, combining with your, your boys and your friends and your communities to survive and thrive into the future and lay that foundation? You might not get to see the building raised, but how are you laying the foundation for a better future? Do brave deeds and endure.